we will, we will change space. Uh, listen, I want you to know, greetings my people. I want you to know that it is a lot more fun to work with students than it is to work with grown-ups. I see you, Gloria. Grown-ups, it is difficult to remind something very important, and that is that life is fun. I think that you know that, with the beard. You look fun. Leonardo da Vinci, new fun. He understood fun. In everything that we know about Leonardo da Vinci from the very beginning to the very end, we can see that he loved life and he loved fun. I love fun. Can everybody understand? Mi nombre es Mike Mongo. Mi español es pobre. <clears throat> but I am trying. When we look at the work of Leonardo da Vinci and we think that this is a genius, this is a person who is smarter than us, we're missing the entire point of the work of Leonardo da Vinci. When we look at the work of Leonardo da Vinci and we see that this is one of the most fantastic artists that have ever lived because he left all of this, all of this work, we're missing out on the reason that he created the work in the first place. Here in 2019, we have come to believe that if you draw or if you paint, or if you commit poetry, that you must be a serious artist. That that is your career. But the truth is otherwise. The reason that Leonardo da Vinci drew and wrote so much, all the art that Leonardo da Vinci did, was so that he could under so that he could understand as a person. He watched the processes. He looked at the natural universe. It's funny because many people do not understand that there was no such word as scientist when Leonardo da Vinci was it was his time. He was a natural philosopher. He looked he stopped, he looked, and he wrote it down. He wrote down what he saw. It's interesting, when Julio was just talking about the, the person who was the dean he had just passed, the person who had just passed, and we paid homage to their memory. In, this, in a similar way that we're doing right now, 500, 500 years after the death of Leonardo da Vinci, there's a story about Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci that a lot of people don't know. This is very interesting. Here it is. Leonardo da Vinci was talking to a, one, a person who said they were 100 years old. Leonardo da Vinci was talking to a person who was saying that they were 100 years old. And he was asking him, how does it feel? How is life? How does it feel? And the 100, and the 100 year old person said, it feels all right. It's, it's just that I'm a little weak. I think I have to go over here. I'm walking too far. He asked the 100 year old person, how does it feel? And he says, it feels all right. I'm just a little weak. Now this story that I'm sharing right now is famous in the Leonardo da Vinci history as the sweet death. Because Leonardo da Vinci was there 
when just a few hours later that person died. The person who was 100 years old, they died. And then Leonardo da Vinci did the most amazing thing. He dissected them. It sounds cruel or morbid. It sounds, it sounds heartless. But that is not how it was. Leonardo da Vinci, in dissecting that person, began to understand how our heart works. He saw that the artery inside had shriveled and flow could not get from the heart to the rest of the body. And that's why the person died. Entiendo? Entiendo? It's funny, when I, when I talk with students, students will immediately answer, yes! When I talk with grown-ups, I, I, get, I get this right here. For me, the most amazing part of that story about the sweet death, we get the term sweet death from Leonardo da Vinci. He called it this. Because the passing was so easy. One moment the person was with us and the next person they are gone. And then Leonardo da Vinci dissects them and finds out about how our heart works. And this is in, this is in the 1500s. This is at the, like the, the technology we had then was, was not good. No, actually it was, uh, it was 1492, I believe that was. So at the very end of the 15th century. But the important thing is the approach that Leonardo da Vinci took with, with this dissection. He approached it in the same way that he approached everything. And if you pay attention, here at the 500 of, of, 500 at the Universidad Pontificia, Bolivari, Bolivariano. If you pay attention, you will see that joy and that love in all of the work that is presented here. And by the way, I'm one of the luckiest people that you'll ever meet. I'm grateful for the opportunity that I have to speak here. And nonetheless, this is a very, very impressive display. It is amazing. It is world class. I hope, I hope everyone here does not take it for granted and appreciates it with the same sense of love and joy that Leonardo da Vinci brought to everything he did. It's funny when we talk about Leonardo da Vinci, we say he, 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 he. We talk about men a lot, he, he, he. But Leonardo da Vinci, Embrace, embrace the feminine. He embraced, he embraced people as, who are women as people. The most famous painting in the world, the Mona Lisa, a woman, painted by Leonardo da Vinci. It speaks to us across centuries. We look at that painting and we wonder, what is it with this painting? Why is it so marvelous? I think that we should probably ask more women why that painting is so marvelous. Because it is beautiful. There is no way you can look at the Mona Lisa and not understand that it is about love. It is not necessarily a, 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 a love between two lovers but an admiration of how beautiful the world is around us. And when we give ourselves to that on a day in and day out basis, something amazing happens. The world becomes a better place. I have only been here on campus for an hour so far. And already I've had that question put to me several times. How do we inspire students for tomorrow? 
how do we get students to pursue careers in astronomy and engineering? And it's the easiest thing in the entire world. You just show them the magic through your eyes. I was talking to Alejandro over here, he's 17 and he wants to go into business administration, but he shares with me that he wanted to be an astronaut. Excuse me. He shares with me, he changed his mind. He's going to be an astronaut now. Because I, as a grown-up, moved all the hubris, the hubris, that was blocking him from pursuing his goal and his dream. And that, that, that the money, the mortgage, the, the, I have to have a job. I have to have this responsible position. I, the, there aren't astronauts from Colombia so many. I moved all of that out of the way. And I let the light of his heart and his dreams and his passion shine through and it took minutes. And then I let him know that when you want something, set your intention. And I was, I was always sharing with Luis, with Julio and Luis, that when you set your intention, when I, when I walked into the room for the first time in, in 2008 and, and explained to astronauts that my name is Mike Mongo and I'm an astronaut teacher, I was telling Alejandro that my voice did not sound, it did not sound like it does now. It sounded like this. My, my name is Mike Mongo and I'm an astronaut teacher. I'm sure it did. And then I took another step forward. And then I said, my name is Mike Mongo and I'm an astronaut teacher. And then I took another step forward. And years passed. And now, now people, now when the spaceship companies call me, and I have that I have the opportunity as a blessing to work with all of the com all the companies, NASA, SpaceX, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, and I'm up here letting you know, you, I'm letting you know, you, yes you, 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 yeah you, you. Set your intention. Don't let anyone get away. When you tell people what you want to do, as I just explained to, so explain to Alejandro, at first they will they will ignore you, and then they will laugh at you, and then they will be angry at you, and then you win. First they will ignore you. And then they will laugh at you. And then they will be angry with you. And then you win. And the other? It's so funny. We talk about what what is the takeaway? I've been asked several times, what's the takeaway? What what do we have that Leonardo da Vinci da Vinci can connect with us here 500 years later? He, we started writing about Leonardo da Vinci when he was 13 years old. When he was 13 years old. The person who invented television was 14 years old. The number one selling music artist in the United States right now, Little Nas X, Old Town Road, is 19 years old. You can do anything you want. Everyone will tell you that is not true and they will get in your way. Oh, hold on. You guys probably understand that. Let me get back to the grown-ups for a second. You can do whatever you want. People will tell you. People will tell you that is not true. They are wrong, or they are lying, or they are scared, and that is okay. But you don't have to listen to them. You can listen to your heart. Let me rephrase that. Listen to your heart. Listen. Listen to your heart. One of the miracles of Leonardo da Vinci is that he wrote Gracias. Es mucho bueno.
He wrote everything down. Wow, this is a good mic. By the power of Grayskull. One of the one of the miracles, one of the blessings of Leonardo da Vinci, of the leg of the legacy of Leonardo da Vinci is that he wrote everything down. Leonardo da Vinci wrote notebook after notebook after notebook. I know a secret about Leonardo da Vinci I'm gonna share it with you right now. It's the most amazing thing, it's so hard to believe. Leonardo da Vinci never sent one email. Not one. He wrote it all down. He made pictures and books. He just drew whatever he saw. And then because he did that, because he did that, we have that now here in the future, 500 years later. And we walk around and we talk about what a genius he was. He was a great human being. You can do that. We can do that. We have that opportunity. All you have to do is stop, put down the iPhone, write, and then magic happens. I wrote down a couple things. I felt, I felt it was an honor. People think that everything is solved. Now I'm back to the students. Estudiante, people think that everything is solved, but it's not. There's opportunities for you to solve all the challenges we face in the world. You just have to stop for a second. You have to put down the Fortnite and start looking at the world. Where was, the, where, where was Leonardo da Vinci for gravity? Gravity. Leonardo da Vinci had almost nothing to say about gravity, but there was, a, 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 it was many of his challenges. The flying machines, he dealt, with, he dealt with it all the time. And yet it was a hundred years later before, we, before another intelligent human being began thinking and talking about gravity. Oh. Consciousness. Leonardo da Vinci did not talk about consciousness. Leonardo, it's so funny because we talk about Leonardo da Vinci and his thinking and how, and how Leonardo da Vinci thought and how his thinking is different than ours. We have this idea that there's a difference between his thinking and our thinking, but it is not the case. He, but he didn't think about consciousness. Now, are, you, are we sharing the same idea? When I'm in a classroom, I will constantly, I love asking students this question. I have everybody imagine a triangle. Pythagorean. I have everyone imagine, think of a triangle. Everybody got a triangle on your heads? Are we all looking at the same one? That's the question. Carl Jung says that we share a common unconsciousness that you have an idea and I have an idea and you can access it and I can access it and, and it may be some sort of archetype that is bigger than us, is beyond us. Maybe as we evolve, we access this place or this thing that we call consciousness in a different way than we are, we are giving consideration to, but Da Vinci did not think about that and you came in. Da Vinci didn't really talk about politics. Da Vinci didn't talk about society. He didn't talk about economics. Da Vinci was born out of wedlock. The things he has to say about parenting are, are sort of odd. He didn't understand. He knew that his dad and the, the, his mom loved one another and they married other people. He knew that. Here's a freebie. This is great. If you want to be rich, you want to be the richest person alive, all you have to do is this. 
You see how this is being recorded on these devices and it's coming out through the microphone into the speakers? That is sound, and we figured that out a hundred years ago. But what about smell? Da Vinci didn't work on smell. You can. Maybe you have an idea about smell that we don't have, and you could share it. Imagine if you could capture smell like you could capture sound. Think how we are moved by, by music. Now think how we are moved by smells. My mom passed in October. She died. And I collect her things, and every so often I come across something that's my mom's, and I smell it. And people know what I'm talking about. She is instantly present for me. Do you know how much I would pay you if you came up with something that I could keep my mom, that smell in my pocket? All my money. So you're young, solve that problem. You're not young, solve that problem. The last thing that I want to share about Leonardo da Vinci to me the most important thing that I have referenced several times in this, in this conversation is his love. He loved so hard. He loved us. It, people, people, if you study Leonardo da, Leonardo da Vinci, you will see that people ask, why was he always so inquisitive? Why did he never stop? Why did he dissect the 100-year-old man? How did he do it without being cruel or, or morbid? Because he knew that whatever was there when the man was alive a few hours earlier lasted beyond him. That this empty vessel was not the person that was there. That the sum of their life those experiences of love. I tell students all the time, I'd rather have a short life filled with love than a long life with none. Look around. If you see the love that is present, a miracle will happen. The university has enabled the possibility of a miracle to take place. And all you have to do is look. Don't play small. Take a chance. Stop. Look. We don't understand how light works. We don't understand how gravity works. We don't understand why life stays in this vessel and doesn't just run away, go somewhere else, and, it, and my flesh collapse. We don't know these things. And you can figure it out. You can figure it out because Leonardo da Vinci figured it out and he was a person just like you. Can we take a leap of faith then this weekend and take on this understanding of a person whose life 500 years ago is touching us today. And except on principle, that truth that lifted Da Vinci just high enough above the ordinary to allow him the vantage to see and to report and to report and to report with steadfast inspiration The miracle is us. The miracle is us. The miracle is us. The miracle is us. For in doing so, we will share in that phenomenon. We will play big. 
and we will see with clarity and experience, with an open heart, hear, and smell, and taste. Da Vinci is here. Love is real. And the phenomenon is life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Iniciamos la sesión de preguntas moderada por el decano de la Escuela de Ingeniería, Roberto Incapié. Si quieren hacer alguna pregunta, tenemos una moderadora con los formatos en este lado del escenario. O si quieren hacerla, también pueden utilizar el micrófono. I love this question. Thank you so much. When, when we, as I, I work primarily with students because it is so challenging to argue with grown-ups. And my job is not to argue. With students, I can say, put these ideas aside and pay attention here. Julio, our opportunity, as you know, is to portray and, and display the behavior that we want to be replicated or reproduced in the students. When we as educators and when we as grown-ups, and I'm 54, I use that term loosely, I use it all the time, grown-up, grown-up. I'm 54, I'm a grown-up, this is a grown-up. When we as grown-ups are busy on the telephone, or are, are, are playing video games, or are watching television, as opposed to paying attention to everything around us and stopping the world and taking time and showing our sons and daughters and, and nephews and nieces and neighbors with integrity, the, the amazingness of what is happening here. All you have to do is look. All we have to do is stop for one second, and, and we are more than capable of that. The older we get, I think the wiser we get. So we have to portray the behavior we want to foster in the next generation. I see parents complaining about technology who are constantly on the phone. And I, I didn't mean to answer directly. I know you know the answer to this question. Students, you can be bold. You can lead the way. I, I, I will follow you. You show me how to do it and I will go in that direction. We cannot criticize technology at a, at a, at a Da Vinci exhibition when this is a person who showed us the value and the worth of of technology. Life is much easier and better now because of technology. It's when we put money at the top that we're like, how can I make money? That's not what drove Leonardo da Vinci. And I, I would dare say it's not what drives the most 
influential creators in our history as a species. We have to be the role models. Mike, you know, the problems are too shy to ask questions here, Mike, or here. Here. I love it. I just like to be. They're going to ask you some questions. Oh, good. Mike. Paul is phenomenal. My name is Camila. Camila? Yeah. Stand up. Mike, a question that I wanted to ask to you is how, what did you do? How, how did you manage to achieve your dreams to, to, to get where you are now? To work for NASA, for SpaceX, all these things. Camilo? What is your dream? My my dream is to be successful in everything that I. That's not a dream. That's a that's a condition. That's a that's a that's not okay. a dream. My I I like to, I like to speak. My dream would be to be very good at what I do and to go outside and speak to be. Uh, Did you say you like to speak? Yeah, I, I like to speak. What do you like to speak on? On. Almost everything I like. You cannot speak on everything. You have to speak on subjects. You can pick one and be really good at it. If you had to pick one subject that you'd be really good at, once you're good at one thing, you can be good at another thing. But you have to start somewhere. So what's the thing that you would start with? I think I would start with nanotechnology. That is a career that is really perfect. University. Thank you for saying it. Say it again. Nanotechnology. Good. That's your that that's your that's your that's your passion, that's your dream, that's your vision. Got it? Yes. Okay. So when it's my passion, my dream, my vision, when I, when I was you, I did not I did not whisper what it, what I wanted to be. I shouted it. I let people make fun of me. I let people tell me no. When it's something that you care about, there's a saying that I was taught. When you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. That is a lie. When you do what you love, you will never work harder at it than anything else. You will give up sleep to do what you love. You, and here's, here's another, that's the first step. The second step is you must find allies. People who believe in your dream and your vision. Surround yourself with allies. Understand? Yeah. Your allies will help pave the way. The third step, mentors. You must find someone who, you, who inspires you, who you want to be like, whose life you admire. One of my mentors is Will Smith, the actor. I've never met him. I like how he lives. Another one of my mentors has known me since I was a child. My actions reflect on him to me. I would, you know, I would rather die than shame that man. And these are the people that I have chosen to be my mentors. First, set your intention. Second, surround yourself with allies. Third, find mentors for your goal. The internet allows you to communicate with anyone in the world. You being a student can reach out to the number one person in, t in nanotechnology and they will almost certainly reply back to you. If they, are, if they do not, they may be busy or they might just be a jerk. There's jerks. It's okay, move on to the next person. Entiendo? Yeah. Does everybody understand that? Does it apply to each and every one of you? Thank you. Thank you. You can be my client. Perfect. For engineering. Mike. So the my best okay, uh, my my name, Paris. Paul is another name? Uh my name is Camila. 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 Uh so then my question is how do you get to inspire to Keep the new generations and the new people who is starting you to know that listen to you. How do you get to them and in the way that you make to them what do you want to do? 
you make your purpose, or make them to have a dream and make them continue their life that they want to follow and maybe they think that way in you. How do you make that? Camilo, restate the question, say it again. Be clear with yourself. How do you inspire the others? Inspire the others? Yes. By example? By example? Yeah. Pre right pre by example? And then the second way is that by communication, by having these conversations all over the world. And the third way is that, this is a good question, Camilo. The third way is that if you do the work, I make points of opening doors for students who do the work. I'm in well into the thousands now. Because I can talk with a grown up and they can ignore me and I will drive them crazy. It's my pleasure and it's my job. And it's their job. It's our job for you. If you do the work, our job is to make sure that the door opens for you. Yeah, that would be clear. Thank you. Yes, of course. Um, I have a question for you, uh, Mike. Uh, this is kind of a silly question, but uh, sorry, how's the name of the What's that? Joseph. Joseph. What's the name of the city? Joseph. I have a kind of silly question, but I noticed you're from NASA, right? I work with NASA, yes. Um, have you worked in a space program? Yes. to space. Thank you. 